Hi everyone, my name is Anna Helmig and I am the Collections Manager and Registrar here at the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery in Dayton, Ohio. And today I'm here in our Anthropology Vault to talk a little bit about our most beloved resident in our Anthropology Collection, and that is Nessir, Dayton's very own ancient Egyptian mummy. Now over the years, Nessir has become a beloved staple at the museum and visitors of all ages have learned so much about ancient Egypt through Nessir. But have you ever wondered what life was like in ancient Egypt for Nessir? Well, you are in luck because today we are going to look at a few artifacts from Egypt and talk a little bit about what life was like for Nessir as a young woman growing up during the 25th dynasty of Egypt. So before I show you these collections objects from ancient Egypt, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do know about Nessir. We know Nessir's name because it's inscribed on her sarcophagus, which is just a fancy word for a coffin. Her name means she who belongs to the Great One, which refers to Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld. Now, Nessir was buried without any amulets, jewelry, or artifacts inside of her mummy wrappings. This means she was probably a commoner of low to middle class. Wealthy Egyptians were buried with special amulets and other objects. However, since not every Egyptian person was mummified, Nessir probably had a special job to designate her as high enough status to be mummified when she died. She might have worked at the temple Deir el-Bahari where she was buried, or she might have been a servant to royalty. And finally, we know that sadly Nessir died young, probably between the ages of 18 and 22. We can tell by looking at evidence on her body, such as the fact that her wisdom teeth have not yet crowned. Now that we know a little bit about Nessir's background, let's take a look at some artifacts to learn about Nessir's daily life. First, I have this bronze figurine of an Egyptian barbell made around the same time that Nessir lived. Now a barbell isn't gym equipment, it's actually a really common type of Egyptian fish that swam in the Nile. The Nile was a very important part of life for ancient Egyptians like Nessir. It was vital to the survival and prosperity of Egypt as a culture because it provided water for crops, reeds to make papyrus, mud for bricks, and perhaps more importantly, fish to eat. Since the barbell was an abundant fish in the Nile, it would have made up a sizable portion of Nessir's diet, in addition to fruit, vegetables, and a type of flatbread called Aish Baladi. Let's move on and talk about the religion that Nessir practiced. Ancient Egyptian religious belief was polytheistic, meaning that people like Nessir would have worshipped hundreds of different gods and goddesses. There were gods like Osiris, who ruled over the dead in the afterlife, and Anubis, the god of mummification, who was often depicted as having the head of a jackal or a dog. This tiny cat represents a goddess that Nessir might have recognized in her religious practice, Bastet. Bastet was the goddess commonly associated with women, children, and cats. As you can see in this figurine, she was often depicted as a cat. Nessir would have taken part in different practices to worship these gods and goddesses. She might have visited a temple devoted to Osiris, Anubis, or Bastet. She probably left offerings to show her devotion to these figures. This tiny cup represents the practice of leaving offerings to the gods. It is inscribed in hieroglyphs with the dedication, votive offering by the pious during religious ceremonies in the open desert necropolis to the great god Osiris. This means that an Egyptian would have filled this cup with wine and left it at a temple or altar for Osiris. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about entertainment. Nessir and other ancient Egyptians entertained themselves in a variety of ways, just like we do. When Nessir was a child, she might have played with toys similar to what we play with today, including model animals and dolls. When Nessir was older, she most likely enjoyed listening to music. Egyptians would sing and play instruments such as the harp or the lyre. Ancient Egyptians even played board games. One of the most popular games was called Senate. The objective seems to have been to move all of one's pieces to the opponent's end of the board, while preventing them from doing the same. These pieces from our anthropology collection are actual gaming pieces from ancient Egypt, made out of ivory. They were made around 332 BC, and were likely used to play Senate or other games. 
Next, let's talk about marriage and family life. Although we have no evidence that Nessir was married, most ancient Egyptian women were married around the age of 12 to 14 to boys who were approximately 15 to 16 years old. Since Nessir was around 18 to 22 when she died, she probably was married. In ancient Egypt, married couples were expected to love and honor one another and take care of one another. Archaeologists have found tomb paintings and other artworks showing husbands and wives eating, dancing, and working side by side, which illustrates the importance of a loving marriage in ancient Egyptian society. Did you know the origin of wedding rings is believed to have begun in ancient Egypt? Egyptians used rings in wedding ceremonies as early as 3000 BCE. These early rings were made of braided hemp or reeds formed into a circle, signifying eternal love. These rings were placed on the fourth finger of the left hand because Egyptians believed a vein ran from that finger straight to the heart. Over time, reed rings were replaced with more durable rings made of bone, leather, ivory, and steel. This ring from our collection gives you an idea of what ancient Egyptian wedding rings might have looked like. It's made from iron and features a gorgeous carnelian stone. The ring is broken now, but the carnelian stone once would have been able to rotate to allow the wearer to fidget with it or display either side of the stone. Lastly, let's talk about ancient Egyptian women. One important part of ancient Egyptian society is that, unlike many other ancient societies, husbands and wives were considered equal partners. Although men were considered to be the head of the household, women had equal legal rights in the marriage and were even allowed to divorce their husband if they were unhappy in their marriage. Women like Nessir could own their own land, business, and homes. Women were even able to rule over Egypt as leaders. Female leaders were greatly respected, just as male leaders were. You probably have heard of Cleopatra, but there were many notable Egyptian women pharaohs. Hatshepsut, whose name means foremost of noble woman, is generally regarded as one of the most successful pharaohs in all of Egyptian history. During her reign, she established ambitious building projects, including the construction of a great temple at Deir el-Bahari. Remember, this temple is where Nessir was buried. Hatshepsut also oversaw the significant expansion of trade, launching a sea voyage to the northeast coast of Africa. Now this collection's object is a wooden figurine from the 6th dynasty in ancient Egypt. It's meant to represent a lady working at the temple at Deir el-Bahari in Thebes. It also looks a little bit like Nessir if you look at her hair and her facial features. Especially when you look at it next to this facial reconstruction done by the Virginia Commonwealth University by Mason Smith under the direction of Dr. Bernard Means. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think it is so interesting to take a look at these artifacts from over 2,000 years ago and use them to learn more about what Nessir's everyday life looked like and also to appreciate ancient Egyptian culture as a whole. But one interesting question that comes to mind after I take a look at all of these objects is that archaeologists 2,000 years from now will take a look at objects from our everyday lives and draw conclusions about those just like we did today. So I think that's an interesting thing to think about and I hope you learned a lot about Nessir from this video. So if you liked it, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.